Sunday, May the 29th, 2022, to our in-person and online worship service. Are we online? No, we're recording today. So we've had some technical dis uh, difficulties since the storm last week. Uh, more than 182,000 people were without power. There were 10 deaths in that storm. And of course, our thoughts are with uh, the families of, of the people that were killed. And so if all we have to suffer is no online worship, then I'm okay with that. So, um, <laughs> we, you know, bear with us. Hopefully we will get a recorded version of, of the service today up on YouTube. Um, so good morning to those people watching us on YouTube. But my message to you is come out and join us in person on Sundays, especially um, in the next, in the summer months when we hope to move outside um, it's a great time for us to gather out on the lawn, under the shade of the trees, and worship together and, and feel safe. So for those who are a little bit anxious about coming back to worship, um, please know that we'll be doing that again this summer. Let's begin by uh, singing our gathering anthem, the hymn together. <laughs> Thank you. 
of years, indigenous peoples have walked on this sacred land. Their relationship with the land is at the center of their lives and of their spirituality. Knox United Church Embro is located on the unceded territory of the Haudenosaunee Gump and the Nishtabex peoples. Treaty 29, 1827. With this acknowledgement, we lift up the hard work of building right relationships with our indigenous siblings. As we deepen our relationship to God and to each other through our conversations, our singing, our praying, and our praise, may we strengthen, teach, and shape each other for the work that God calls us to in the world. We light this candle as a sign of God's spirit at work in the world. May its light brighten our spirits, and may the light of God shining through us brighten the world. Join me for our call to worship. The grace of Jesus Christ be with all the saints. We have gathered in that grace to worship God. Rejoice in God and give thanks to God's holy name. Let all heaven and earth behold the lost Lord. God is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. All creation is subject to God's rule and reign. We bring our prayers and praise to God most high. We lift our voices in hymns of celebration. Come, all who hunger, all who thirst, be nourished and renewed in this time of worship. We bring joys and sorrows, fullness and peace. We come with successes and failures. We come seeking. Let us pray. Free us, O oh God, from change that's chains that stifle the free flow of your spirit in our lives and out into your creation. Form us with worship and prayer that bind us to you and to one another. Lead us to rejoice in your presence wherever your path may lead. Amen. This morning, I'm wearing a t-shirt that my daughter bought and gifted me. It's um, the sales, 100% of the sales of this t-shirt in a certain period of time um, were donated to the Red Cross in support of Ukraine. It says, make peace, not war. And then it's the sunflower on the back. The choir gets to see the sunflower. Yes, actually. <laughs> My cousin's wife is, uh, works for the Red Cross, and she's presently working in the uh, Toronto airport, welcoming people from Ukraine uh, at the airport, assisting them, getting them uh, processed, and then settled and um, directed. And so this is a shout out to Lisa and the teams of people that do this challenging work. May our prayers be with them. I also want to mention that the roses on the communion table this morning are placed in memory of Beth Campbell, whose life we celebrated yesterday here at the church. Let us sing our opening hymn, I Love to Tell the Story.
Let us pray. O oh God of story, in the beginning you created humankind. The Bible contains your story of love and encouragement and challenge to your creation, to your children, to, and to us. Today we pray that our hearts and minds be open to hear what your Spirit is saying to us. Amen. In this scripture, like the disciples did, uh, we get to overhear a prayer that Jesus prayed centuries ago. I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me, and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one, as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them, even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am, to see my glory, which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. May God bless <clears throat> excuse me, these words to our deeper understanding and our daily walk. I prayed this week as I was sobbing and driving my car to come here to church. And I was listening to CBC News announce that there had been yet another school shooting in Texas, where 21 people were killed, 19 of them young children. And my prayer went something like this. Oh God, bring peace and comfort to those who grieve. Bring clarity and understanding to those in power to make the changes needed to eradicate this type of violence. Please, God, stir in the hearts of your people a fire too hot and fierce to quench with complacency, a fire of justice that demands change, that irrefutably states that this is not okay. Please, God, hear my prayer. You may have prayed a similar prayer upon hearing that news. What does it feel like to have someone pray for you while you are with them, while they're possibly holding your hand or just in the room with you, perhaps while you lie on your bed unwell, or as you softly weep in grief, bent over in surrender to a painful situation. What does it feel like to have someone pray from you from across the world, or through the ages, spanning centuries, and yet landing on your ears today, right now, in this moment. In today's scripture, which marks the end of the season of Easter, we overhear, along with the disciples, the closest friends of Jesus, his own, a prayer that Jesus prayed before he was arrested and crucified. He prayed for himself, he prayed for his disciples, and then he prayed, and I quote, on behalf of those who believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. 
Jesus prayed for us. Those who believe in Jesus through the word of the believers who came before us. And what did Jesus pray for? That we may all be one. What does it mean to be one? What is oneness? Especially in our diversity, in our unique and diverse relationships. If we wrote a list of synonyms for oneness, we might come up with connected, whole, interlocked, harmony, togetherness, commonality, on the same page, fusion, seamlessness, cooperation, interwoven, unity of purpose or simply unified. And why might Jesus be praying for us to all be one? Well, some might say that this is in fact his sole purpose for being, to unify us in God's love. Jesus wanted to be sure that we could all live into and experience the same intimacy and oneness with God that he experienced in his relationship with God. And what did that oneness that Jesus and God experienced look like in the life of Jesus? Well, there are lots of stories about it in scripture. And we even sang a hymn that says we love to tell these stories. Jesus is the vine inviting us to be the branches. He nurtured us, the compassionate gardener, so we could bear fruit. He reached out to and was in relationship with those on the margins. He told the Samaritan woman at the well that she was included in God's love. He provided abundance. He turned water into wine. He fed 5,000 and shared meals with everyone. No one was excluded, not even the tax collectors or the people of other faiths. Jesus became the light of the world and invited us to let our light shine God's love into the world as well. Jesus lived a life of service, washing the feet of his friends, accepting all who came to him. And he loved us as God loved him unconditionally. And that at Easter, he triumphed over death. All these actions of love were all made possible because of the intimate oneness of the relationship between God and Jesus. And it's important for us to notice that this oneness, this unity, is not a prayer that we can keep holding on to our church buildings, or we can keep going, or we can stay afloat, or we can fill the pews with people. Jesus was never concerned with how many people came to hear him on the hilltop. Jesus was always on the move. He wasn't sitting still in a building. He was out in the world. After all, it was Jesus who said, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. No, this oneness, this unity, comes from our common experience of God's love. This oneness, this unity, this common experience of God's love when shared, generates mutual and reciprocal community living. When Jesus was one with God, he saw, we saw, power over death, unconditional love, being in relationship with those on the margins, as well as those who are the success stories of our culture and society. 
And we saw an abundance of goodness in the lives of all who came in contact with Jesus. So what might be holding us back from being at one with God like Jesus was? All the time, in every aspect of our lives. It sounds pretty good. In fact, it sounds pretty awesome. Unfortunately, we sometimes shy away from that kind of intimacy. It's not easy to surrender ourselves fully in our relationships. It takes a lot of trust. But Jesus encourages us. He often said, and it was said of him, I'm just going to quote some things here, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. A phrase I often use during uh, funeral services. It was also said, but to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God. And he prays himself today, I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who believe in me through their word. And interestingly, the Greek word for believe is also translated as trust. And so we can hear that again. Trust in God. Trust also in Jesus. To all who received Jesus, who trusted in his name, he gave power to. And Jesus asked not only on behalf of his disciples, but he also prayed for all those who trusted in Jesus through the word of the disciples. Jesus prayed for us. Believe and trust. Where do we see moments when we experience, individually or communally, the oneness of God in our relationship with God? Where does true communion happen? Where does our Christian unity and expression of God's love in the world manifest in our lives? Where do we see signs of God's kingdom being built? And please let us fully understand and accept the fact that the kingdom is not a place. It's not a building. The kingdom of God is the presence of God in our lives, intimately connected to everything we do, think, experience. It's the presence of God in every one of our thoughts and actions. It's God so interwoven, so connected, so unified with our beings. There is no separation, only oneness. And if God is within us, some might say it's when we are fully connected with our inner presence. It seems obvious. We're in our bodies. We sense the presence within us, but we're not always connected with that inner presence. I see glimpses of our oneness with God when we speak up on behalf of those who do not have a voice. I see it when we share our resources, when we lift each other up, when we collect donations, when we visit people who are lonely, when we come together as a church family to make it possible for a family to hold a funeral of a beloved faith community member right here in our church. That's when I sense the oneness that we can experience with God. And today is our lucky day because I have a photograph of this manifestation of God's oneness to show you. And I've titled it, Yup, That's God. And it illustrates for us what it looks like when we are intimately in relationship with God. I bet you can't wait to see that photograph. Yolanda? Can you show us the photo? There it is. Yep, that's God. This is Charlotte, 
and Alyssa. Charlotte is the granddaughter of Karen and David Murray, and Alyssa is a three-year-old who has just escaped the violence in Ukraine with her family and is now living with the Murrays. These two little girls are playing together. Charlotte does not speak or understand Ukrainian, and Alyssa does not speak or understand English, but they both know something of the language of God's love. And whatever oneness they experience together has nothing to do with speaking the same national language, agreeing with each other, doing things the same way, or voting the same. Okay, I know they're not at voting age yet, but stay with me. Their oneness is all about being in relationship, not agreement. It's about being in relationship with each other. Yeah, that's God. The unity that we long for, the oneness that we yearn for, is here, available to us to accept and embrace. It was created in the beginning, long before the world was created, long before the Big Bang, long before everything, and since we didn't create it, it can't be destroyed. Jesus prayed, Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am to see my glory, which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. This is the love Jesus prayed we would embrace because this love is our salvation. Reverend Dr. Joy J. Moore, who is a professor of biblical preaching at Lutheran Luther Seminary in St. Paul, Minnesota, wisely says that our salvation is restoring all humanity individually and collectively and that every healing is evidence of our oneness with God. One with God, one with each other. And I would extend that by saying our salvation comes to us through the healing of all of creation. Our salvation comes when we reconcile with all of creation and all of humanity, intimately living our relationship with God, so that all may be one. May it be so. Amen. Let us sing together.
A prayer for the church, uh, sorry, this affirmation of faith, which we are about to say together, was a prayer for the church inspired by the scripture today, John 17, 21, and based on the United Church of Canada's A New Creed and the United Church of Christ's statement of faith in the form of a doxology. Uh, it was written in celebration of full communion of these two denominations, the United Church of Canada in Canada and the United Church of Christ in the U.S. So let us say it together. Uniting God, you call us into your church to accept the cost and the joy of the salvation, to celebrate your presence, to live with respect in creation, to be your servants in the service of others, to see justice and resist evil, to share in Christ's baptism and eat at his table, to proclaim Jesus, the crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. Send your Holy Spirit to bind us in full communion so that we may be a united church embodying the real love for the world. As one, we proclaim, in life, in death, in life beyond death, you are with us, we are not alone. All glory and power be unto you. Amen.
Should I say anything about it? <clears throat> Giving is an act of faith. We believe what we have to offer makes a difference in the world. But more than that, we believe in the one who is behind our giving. We may not see God with these eyes of flesh. We may not find, you know, we might find it difficult to even catch a glimpse of what God may be doing around us or in us. Likewise, we may not see the effect of what we give or of what we do for Christ. But still, we believe, trusting in the one who is faithful, whose new mercies we often can only see by faith, day by day. I invite you, my siblings in Christ, to give now as an act of faith. For those in the pews today, the offering plates can be found just outside the sanctuary doors. And for those joining us online, your offerings can be made through par, e-transfer, or by check. Let us sing. our gifts and our lives, praying that you will expand them in every way, transforming what we offer into daring vehicles for change. Amen. We have some birthdays this week, uh, Gerard Schreiber's birthday, and Ruth Lawson's birthday, and Ruth Wallace's birthday, and Ruth is turning a hundred on Tuesday, May the 31st. So yay, Ruth. And Anne uh, Knox, um, it's also her birthday coming up this week. Are there any other birthdays or any other community announcements which need to be made known at this time? Yes. It's uh, not new at the community spot, but uh, in a way it's a church, church family. I'm just wondering if you could gather next Saturday in the morning at Carol 9 30 to have a bit of a tea. Uh, our, our garden has been sagging for two years now. It's a bit cold, and we're trying to buy that, hopefully. And uh, if, uh, if any of those are free, and we're not all the gas in the house. What time, John? 9 30. Okay, so John is uh, calling a work bee for the outdoor gardens around the church for 9 30 next Saturday, That's June right. the 4th, I believe. Not yeah. Perfectly. Yeah, so if you're able to come out, <laughs> if you're able to come out and uh, bring a few, a trowel and a rake and... The, the important thing would be uh, a couple extra wheelbarrow if I have one. Uh, I'll have bulbs here. I'm going to be a guest on the farm and we have a few more this year than we normally do. And uh, we have a, a little, a little big door on one of the window wells. Uh, the cat has been looking at some of the uh, bricks that are softening. Yeah, ready to go.
Okay. So Walt's just mentioning that um, Operation Sharing, grateful for the donations that we've given to this so far and to continue, and that body wash is one of the um, personal hygiene items that is needed at this time. Anything else? Yes. Uh, just a saw it on Facebook this week that Young West and Heather uh, was very successful with a wrestling. Oh. And uh, then you may know if your father was quite a wrestler in the community and was, did very well. Uh, he was one in Edmonton and he lost to Argentina. Wow, congratulations, oh, Wesley, Wesley Heather. But anyways, Wes has been an active volunteer here. He runs up and down the stairs when we do our barbecues. That's great. Congratulations, Leslie. Anything else? Yes. My, my brother Steve's birthday is tomorrow. Oh, okay. And my mother's birthday will be the next day. And I think that at the time that uh, he was born, she said to uh, set the clocks a little bit earlier uh, to get him born in the same day. <laughs> <laughs> Almost so close. <laughs> so happy birthday, Steve McKay. All right. Anything else? You may have noticed that I, I brought some sunflowers. These are um, the same sunflowers that I planted the seeds in Lent together with you as we did uh, a prayer, prayers of the people. And so I brought this as a, a good illustration of what happens when you sow a seed. And um, I'm going to, uh, hopefully we're gonna plant those into the, the gardens. Um, perhaps I should wait until we do our, our, our bee and then, and then plant them. That might be a good idea, just so that we're not uh, having to jump around when we're knocking over. Um, and it's a, it's a good reminder of the promises that we made. Um, we will tend the life of the creation. We will rely less on consumer goods around us and share more with those who long for basic necessities. We will honor the insights of the indigenous people of this land. We will bring love to those whose lives are stunted by discrimination. We will add to the reconciliation and peace of the world. We will plant and tend seeds of hope and actions of peace during this war, and we will hold the people of Ukraine deep in our hearts as we ask God to do the same. We will receive refugees with generosity. Let us pray our prayers of God's people. God of freedom and life, we pray for those who are bound in a fear of others, who live through prejudice, who seek to dominate others they do not understand because of ethnicity and language, gender and sexuality, age and politics. Hear us as we pray for a community that breaks prejudices and lives in diversity. Hear us as we break the chains. God of freedom and life, we pray for those who are caught up in pain, who are trapped in the suffering of illness or anxiety, who seek freedom through a peace of mind and a life supported and encouraged by others. Hear us as we pray for a healing that comes in freedom from loneliness and worry. Hear us as we break the chains. God of freedom and life, we pray for those who are trapped in conflict of violence that is not their own doing, of neighborhoods and nations who seek conflict before they seek peace. Hear us as we pray for those all trapped in violence, 
Hear us as we break the chains. God of freedom and life, we pray for those who are snared in abuse, in unhealthy and unloving relationships, those trafficked and abused by others, where worth and value seem to belong to others. Hear us as we pray for those enslaved and in difficult relationships. Hear us as we break the chains. God of freedom and life, we pray for all people whose living is not the fullness you long for, who are held back by another's power. Hear us as we pray for all those bound up in life. Hear us as we break the chains. Bless us now as we pray in the way of Jesus saying, our heavenly parent, our mother and our father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us sing together our closing hymn, Let Us Build a House.
We take the Christ light with us. It is the light that burns in us and is shared with all through our words and our deeds. We go in peace with the God of freedom. We go in hope with the God of life. We go in faith with the God of the future. We go in grace with the God of love. And as we go, may we know that the mystery that is the love of God, the compassion that is the peace of Jesus, and the companionship of the empowering Holy Spirit are with us now and always. Amen. God's love.